Hello. Um, so uh, the research I'm going to be talking about for uh, this uh, section uh, uh, investigated characters' words in the tale of Genji. Uh, the tale of Genji has a long history of research, and uh, characters' words are not exception to that. However, it's working or not working? Oh, it's working. <laughs> it's working, sorry. I was pushing the wrong button. <laughs> so most previous research on characters' words in the tale of Genji has been limited to qualitative analysis, but there is this research that investigated um, characters' words in the, short, uh, in the short forms, but this research uh, did not investigate other, sh other forms of characters' words. So therefore, this research focusing on emotive adjectives uh, investigated characters' words in different forms, such as letter, conversation, and inner speech by employing a quantitative method known as um, correspondence analysis. And here are the objectives of uh, the research. So by investigating uh, emotive adjectives, we aim to identify uh, first, if there are any gender differences in the use of emotive adjectives. So that means that if um, gender differences actually affect the use of emotive adjectives among characters. And two, if there are any tendencies in the, uh, in the use of emotive adjective among characters, so me, uh, that means that um, if um, not only gender differences, but also like other maybe factors may actually affect the use of emotive adjectives among, uh, among characters. And here are the data and a method for the analysis. And the data used for this research is extracted from the corpus of historically of Japanese, um, which is a diachronic uh, corpus developed by the National Institute for Japanese Language and Linguistics. And the data for the tale of Genji uh, contains 445,711 tokens in total, and among which about one third of the tokens are uh, considered to be characters' words. And the method, as I mentioned earlier, we employed correspondence analysis. And uh, correspondence analysis is very useful for, um, for research that uh, deals with categorical data because correspondence analysis actually detects um, patterns inherent in data and show them in scatter plot. And for categories, we uh, divided characters into four categories, priest, male lay person, non, and female lay person. So these are the four categories. And like I said earlier, we investigated emotive adjectives and we chose 34 emotive adjectives that occur most frequently in the character's words. And then here is the breakdown of the 34 emotive adjectives in each category. Sorry, probably too small. And the analysis. Here's the resulting plot we got. And the blue boxes uh, re uh, represent emotive adjectives and pink circles uh, represent character categories. So as you can see here, factor one explains 63.8% uh, of the variation, and factor two explains 20.5% uh, of the variation. So which means that this plot uh, explains 84.3% of the variation in total, uh, which I think is a pretty good number because the higher this um, percentage is, uh, the fewer insights will be missing. So now I would like to look at where the character categories are actually located on the plot. As you can see here on the right side, we have the female categories and on the left side, we have the male categories. So that means that factor one uh, shows a uh, female and male uh, difference. And in factor two, we have on the upper part of the plot, we have priest fit categories, so priest and a noun, and then on the bottom part of the plot, we have lay person categories, lay, uh, male lay person and a female lay person. So factor two uh, shows uh, priest fit and lay person uh, difference. So that means that, uh, let's say if our, an, an adjective is located on the right side, 
which means that the emotive adjectives is more uh, strongly related with female categories. So the further the um, emotive adjective from the origin, the more strongly related that is related to the female uh, category. So this plot actually uh, tells us a lot of interesting things, but for this presentation, I would like to um, pick one emotive adjective, which is ui, so which means melancholy. So this adjective is located on the right side of the plot, so that means that uh, this emotive adjective is uh, strongly uh, associated with female categories. But which one? We have a noun and also female layperson category here. So in order to decide that, we can draw lines like this. And as you can see here, the angle between the, the emotive adjective and the female layperson uh, category is actually much smaller than the angle between noun and then the emotive adjectives. So that means that this emotive adjective is more, cross, uh, more strongly related with female layperson category. So that means that this um, emotive adjectives tend to be used by female layperson characters. And actually, this tendency is actually pointed out in this investigation where um, uh, a words, uh, in this investigation, uh, what is it called? Collocation network. Collocation network is um, applied on, on, on the words of the short poems in the Kokin Wakashu. Kokin Wakashu is the first imperial anthology of short poems, which was um, compiled in the same age as the tale of Genji. And this anthology is, a, is considered to be the norm of this period and also represent gender ideology of this period. So that means that female layperson uh, characters in the tale of Genji actually follow the gender ideology of this period. So here are some tentative conclusions. So uh, by investigating emotive adjectives, this analysis shows that first, there are some um, emotive adjectives that are, are strongly associated with uh, a, a certain character categories, even though some uh, emotive adjectives are not really closely or strongly related to, strongly associated with any character categories. And two, uh, there are some differences in the use of high frequency motive adjectives and that these uh, differences may represent gender ideology in this period. And also third, uh, by analyzing words uh, produced by characters may actually reveal how these characters are shaped through their own words. And which means that um, if a female layperson oh. character uses words that are strongly related with a uh, male layperson category. Maybe this character is not depicted as ideal or maybe like different in some way. And I actually found some cases like this. If you know something about the tale of Genji or some characters in the tale of Genji, there is this lady uh, who is called Lady Rokujo. So she is uh, considered to be one of the ideal characters in the tale of Genji but when she is not in a normal state, she actually uses some words that are strongly related to um, male layperson categories. So maybe like this kind of wording uh, shows that she's not in a normal state. So I, I feel like um, this kind of analysis can be helpful for uh, translation in the future because like uh, if you can get some nuances in the word, can be translated to you know, another language, not only kind of meaning, but also nuances. So that's future goal, but I hope I can do something like that. And before ending uh, the presentation, I would like to acknowledge that this uh, research was supported by the Ninja Collaborative Research Project, and here are the some references. Thank you. <laughs>